Hey, I'm Pastor Steve Craig. Welcome to St. John's Presbyterian Church on this, what day is it? Palm, Palm Sunday. Sometimes we call it Passion Sunday. We, we kind of like to call it Passion Sunday here because on this day in particular, we, we come to the cross. And so we, wanna, we don't want to forget the cross. Sometimes we go to Palm Sunday and we bypass the cross completely don't even go to a Good Friday service, and then we go right to Easter, we don't ever experience the cross. So I, I think it's so important for us to take time to come to the cross. It's such a, an important and central part of our faith. And this morning, we get to walk with Jesus and Mary right to the cross. And uh, I want to invite those of you who are online to do the same thing. And please write your name in the chat window, let us know that you're here, and know that at any time during the service, like I say every week, you can click the request prayer button, and you'll be taken to a private little chat room where you can share whatever's on your heart today. It's good to be in worship together. It's Passion Sunday. Does anyone feel passionate today? Well, by the end of the service, I believe the Holy Spirit's going to bring that passion right into our hearts. We're going to be renewed in our faith. We're going to be set on fire with the love of God right at the foot of the cross. So wherever you are, whatever's going on in your life, whatever burdens you're carrying, just know this is the place to be today. Let's begin with a call to worship. Leah's going to come and help us, our director of student ministries. And then Taylor and Alexa are going to lead us in worship this morning. Now, as we do this, uh, this particular call to worship is a little different. We're going to start up here with a strong voice, and then we're going to get quieter. You'll follow my hand, and then we're going to get a little bit louder again. You got that? So I'll start off. I'll do the first one. Leah and I are going to go back and forth. Equal with God, Jesus is Lord. Emptied himself. himself. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Came as a slave. In human form. Jesus is Lord. Humbly obeyed. Jesus Went to his death. Jesus is Lord. Death on a cross. God raised him up. Jesus is Lord. Gave him the name. Jesus is Lord. Higher than all. Jesus is Lord. Every knee bow. Jesus is Lord. All tongues confess. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Join me for the opening prayer. Bless Savior. Savior. As, As we, we come, come to, to the, the beginning, beginning of, of Holy Week, Week, remembering your triumphant entry into Jerusalem, we sing your praises shouting Hosanna to the son of David. You are our one true Lord, who is higher than any other. For in your great mercy, you humbled yourself. You came like taking on human form, living among us in humility and laying down your life for the world. As we celebrate and shout Hosanna today, help us to remember what soon will follow. Keep us faithful to you in word and deed, and help us to love one another as you have loved us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Let's stand and let's worship together. Good morning, everybody. As we sing this first song, I think of our God coming into Jerusalem on a donkey, not on a big white horse, not on, not on something big and powerful and majestic, but something lowly and something common, something unexpected. And how God is so often someone who's unexpected for us. And sometimes we want to build up God to be something else, but our God is who our God is. And so as we sing this song, Cornerstone, I call it an idol bashing song. It's a song where we tear down our idols. Our hope is built on nothing less but Jesus and his righteousness. So let's sing together. My hope 
hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only trust in Jesus' name. Hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. And through the storm, He is Lord, He is Lord of all. darkness seems to hide his face I rest on his unchanging grace in every eye and stormy gale my anchor rolls within the veil and Christ alone Weak and strong in the Savior's love. And through thy storm, He is Lord. He is Lord of all. And He is Lord. And He is Lord. In the Savior's love, and through thy storm, He is Lord, He is Lord of all. Christ alone, the cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. And through thy storm, he is Lord, he is Lord of all. And he is Lord, he is Lord of all. When he shall come with trumpet sound oh may i then in him be found dressed in his righteousness alone faultless to stand before the throne In the darkness we were waiting without hope, without light. Till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes. To fulfill the law and prophets, to a virgin came the word. From a throne of endless glory, to a cradle in the dirt.
Oh, praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of peace. To reveal the kingdom coming and reconcile the lost. To redeem the whole creation, you did not despise the cross. And for even in your suffering, you saw to the other side. Knowing this was our salvation, Jesus for our sake you died. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. And the morning that you rose, all the heaven held its breath. For the cross was looking good, and the Lamb had conquered death. And the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe. And the souls who'd come to the Father were restored. And the church of Christ was born. Then the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of old shall not kneel and shall not faint. By his blood and in his name, in his freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ who has resurrected me. So praise the Father, praise the Son, and praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, and praise forever to the King of kings. And praise forever to the King of Kings. So praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. God, you're so good that you would come for us. You are so good to love us first, to love us so endlessly that nothing in all of existence could keep us from you. How great the chasm that lay between us, how high the mountain I could not climb in desperation. I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. And through the darkness, 
your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written jesus christ my living hope who could imagine so great a mercy what i could fathom such boundless grace the god of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame the cross has spoken i am forgiven the king of kings calls me his own beautiful savior i'm yours forever jesus christ my living hope. So hallelujah, praise the one who sets me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe out of the silence. The roaring no claim on me no jesus yours is the victory yeah well, hallelujah praise the one who set me free hallelujah death has lost its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name jesus christ my living hope jesus christ my living hope oh god you are my living hope god thank you that that's true that you are our hope. You are, you are who we turn to always, but especially this week. And we thank you for your love. We thank you for your promise. And we thank you for resurrection and for joy and for hope. God, you are good. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's turn to one another right now. Let's give a hug and a handshake and wish one another a happy Passion Sunday. Let's bless one another right now. Thanks, Alexa.
Spirit. can just call people. Better here? Yeah. Where we feel. You can start Good morning. How's everybody today? Is it on? Okay. I'm glad everybody's here this morning. After such a beautiful uh, praising songs, Reminded of what's going to happen this week. It's such a blessing to be here. So since everybody wants to be up and about, why don't we all stand up and join me in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to be here. Father, it's a special week for us, Lord, a, a time to remember, a time to celebrate, a time, Father, where we think of those that don't know you, Lord, and we have, in, and we have them in our hearts and in our prayers, Lord, that they will come to know what we know, what happened this week, Lord. We thank you and we praise you. We thank you, Father, for what you've done in that cross. It is finished. And, Lord, we continue the work that you finished and everything, Lord, as that song said, it, it is already written what is going to happen, Lord. And we are blessed to be part of it, Lord, to be, to be showing the love that you showed us to us, Lord. We thank you for that. We thank you that you gave everything, uh, your life, in that cross. And you said that you gave a new commandment, that we love others as you love us, Lord. And Father, I, I doubt that any of us are giving our life for somebody else. So Father, help us, uh, Lord, to, to show your love, starting with us here at the church. Help us, Father, when we go and encounter the, encounter the world, Lord, where people have other ideas that we don't have, where people uh, have uh, even things about politics, Lord, thinking or choosing different than we do. Father, that's when we show this love when we show mercy and love to others, Father. When people treat us, uh, Lord, with contempt, that's when we show that love, Lord. And Father, we cannot do it without you. Father, um, so many things has hap happened this last week, and it has been tragedies again, Lord. Uh, the world, Father, has so many things going on. But Father, you have overcome the world. So, Father, we pray for all those things that are happening, Lord, uh, that we, your church, will show the world, Lord, that there is a different way and is your way, Lord, the way of the cross. Father, we thank you for, for our church, Lord. Uh, we thank you, Father, for all those that are not able to be here, that today they will feel your presence at home, Father, or wherever they are being taken care of. We pray for Alice, Lois, Cliff. Marilyn, Joanne, and Father, we thank you for those that are out and about, Aquila, Lord, with ISF, Lord, camp out to Death Valley this weekend. Father, we thank you that there are a group of people that many of them probably don't know you, and I pray, Father, you will continue using this ministry, Lord, and that people that don't know you will come to know you. Father, there has been death of loved ones, not only here in our church, Lord, around the world and father you said that you are close to the brokenhearted i pray father that these people in their pain lord as they are grieving that they will feel your presence that they will turn to you lord and find you in this time that they need you father and i pray that if any of these people don't know you lord that they will come to know you father we have people in, in their congregation that are sick and they have their names here lord uh, and Father, uh, we lift up to you, Christine, King, James Combs, Keith, Jay Foster, Sue Mader, Kathy, Nancy, Vinal, Maria, Violetta. Father, you said that you are our healer. 
And I pray, Father, for these people. Father, I pray for healing physically, mentally, and spiritually, Lord, that they will feel your hand today, Lord. Father, we, we thank you for what is going to happen this coming week, not only in this church, but in all the churches around our area, Lord, and in our world. Father, I pray, Lord, that we as a congregation, we as the people that know you, Lord, will be praying for those people that are going to come, Lord, to our service and that usually don't go to church. I pray, Father, that your presence will be in this place, Lord, that your name be glorified, that your name be exalted. And, Father, we come to you giving you all the glory and all your honor. Father, in your presence, Lord, when we have all these fears and, and all these doubts, Lord, it's in your presence, Lord, that we, that we have peace. And, Father, um, as you taught your disciples how to pray, we pray the Lord's prayer right now, Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Amen.
Spirit of God, we thank you for calling us to this time of worship and prayer at the foot of the cross this morning on this Passion Sunday. We thank you for this invitation to sing, to worship, to pray, to open our hearts once again to the movements of your spirit in us. I pray, Lord, that you'd help us to listen now to your word that you'd help us once again to receive what you have for us this morning, that you might do your transforming and healing work in each and every one of us. You know what we need even before we speak it. And so now we come to you, Lord, with confidence that you know us better than we know ourselves. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Amen. In the series of great women, Lessons from Great Women of the Bible, we're returning now on this Passion Sunday to the great women of the New Testament, the women who followed Jesus, who helped to found the early church, who were numbered among Jesus' closest followers, who stood beside him at the cross, at the tomb, and who prayed even for the coming of the Holy Spirit as the risen Christ commanded them to wait. And through all of that, Mary, the mother of Jesus, was present. If you've been watching the news, uh, you know that Pope Francis just got out of the hospital. He had been suffering from a respiratory infection. He just got out of the hospital. And... A lot of us, including myself, have a lot of admiration for the Pope, even being a Presbyterian. And he uh, tweeted as he got out of the hospital, while he was there, by the way, he was praying for many children in that hospital. And he said this, he said in one of his tweets, I thank everyone for their closeness and prayer. I entrust the sick to Mary, especially the youngest, like those I met in the oncology ward at Jemeli. Let us pray for those who suffer the loss of dear ones and for those who work in hospitals. It takes courage, and I admire them. I love that. Beautiful words. And as Protestants, we're not accustomed to entrusting other people to marry, right? So that's, that's a different concept for us. We're not accustomed to doing that. When I was at my, my cousin's uh, consecration as a Russian Orthodox bishop, I went down and prayed at a little altar where Mary was pictured in an icon, and I lit a candle of prayer, and I was praying for the women, actually, in my life. And once again, it was, a, it was an invitation to pray, and Mary is known often as the, the intercessor, our intercessor in, in the Roman Catholic Church. And I think as Protestants, we've been concerned that maybe the veneration of Mary borders on worship, and so that we maybe have done the opposite, I think, is we've not, we've neglected her, I think. We've neglected the importance that she plays in the church. And that's why I think it's so important that we revisit the role of, of Mary, which was so pivotal, obviously, in the life of Jesus. Uh, Martin Luther said that Mary was the highest woman 
And he goes on to say that the veneration of Mary is inscribed in the very depths of the human heart and that we should wish that everyone know and respect her. That everyone know and respect her. When Mary is told that she is going to bear the Christ child by the Holy Spirit, we read, and this is the J.B. Phillips translation, which I love, Mary was deeply shaken at these words, and she wondered what such a greeting could possibly mean. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. God loves you dearly. God loves you dearly. You are going to be the mother of a son, and you will call him Jesus, and he will be great and will be known as the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his forefather David, and his reign shall never end. And then Mary spoke to the angel, how can this be, she said. I'm not married. Now, like Eugene Peterson puts it a little more flatly, I've never slept with a man. So how is this going to happen? I love that Mary's response to the angel is, first of all, a very rational question. And it leads us to, I think, explore several powerful prayers that Mary presents to God through these scriptures that will actually help us speak honestly to God as well. And the first of these is a prayer, and this is something I think we all need, a prayer of honest uncertainty. Have you ever prayed a prayer like that? God, I don't know what you're doing. How is this going to happen? What are you up to? I don't feel your presence. A prayer of honest uncertainty. How can this be? How can this be? We read that Mary is deeply shaken, deeply shaken. I love this word. It's dia terasso is the Greek word. And terasso is the word that the Greeks used for being terrified or deeply disturbed or very fearful. And you put dia in front of that, and that means take that feeling of fear, uncertainty, and doubt to the limit. Take it to the limit. So Mary was at her limits. She was at her total limits. Have you ever been at your total limit? The limits where you felt like you were being pressed to the limits of fear or anxiety or worry. I think if you're honest, every single one of us could say, I know what that feels like. Now, maybe I don't know what it feels like for somebody else, but I know what it feels like for me when I'm pressed to the limits and I feel tremendous fear or anxiety or worry. I felt that. Mary had no idea how Joseph was going to react to her explanation of what was happening in her body. She could be stoned. As far as the law was concerned, she could lose her life. You could imagine that that would terrify her in addition to just having a numinous experience of an angelic messenger uh, presented before her. She was also probably very worried about the practical implications of what was about to happen. But the Bible invites us to see through Mary's eyes, and get this, how faith and doubt can coexist in one person. Faith and doubt can coexist in one person and does coexist. In every single one of us, every single one of us practices faith. Every single one of us has questions about life, has questions for God. And what I love about this passage is the Bible invites us to see through Mary's eyes that feeling unsure or troubled doesn't mean that we have no faith in God. It means that our faith is truly faith. <laughs> it's truly faith. And as Bonhoeffer used to say, we have to put ourselves in the place where faith is possible in order to have to exercise it. So if you've ever been put in a place where faith is possible, it becomes therefore necessary. And faith seeks to understand. A thousand years ago, Anselm of Canterbury said, credo ut intelligam. That means, I believe that I may understand. I believe that I may understand. You know, 
Einstein talked about the intuitive leaps that he used to take. He said some of his greatest insights into the universe came not through a mathematical calculation, but through an intuitive leap inside his own heart. A hunch, a feeling, uh, uh, you might call it a, a step of faith. I believe that I may understand. I believe that I may understand. And Mary spent her life seeking a deeper understanding of this one whom she both birthed and believed. When Jesus went missing for three days as a 12-year-old boy, Mary was shocked to find him in the temple. She and Joseph find him in the temple. Imagine that. Your kid goes missing for three days, and the first thing he says is, why were you looking for me? Didn't you know I was supposed to be in my father's house? Somehow I don't think that explanation passed the parental test for Mary and Joseph. It does say that Jesus was obedient to his parents from that point on. <laughs> but she was growing to understand, who is this person? Who is this person who spends his, his time not playing with toys, but talking with the scribes and the Pharisees in the temple. When Mark tells of how Jesus had no time to eat because of the growing crowds, we read that his family tried to restrain him. They tried to restrain him. And that his mother and brothers tried to call him back inside. They were, some people were worried that Jesus was going out of his mind. That's what Mark says. And I imagine them calling out to Jesus, Jesus, you have to stop. You have to stop this. You've got to get some rest. This is crazy. I love that the Gospels are so honest about the befuddlement, the, the questions, the lack of understanding that even his own family at times had or the ability to fully take it all in. Maybe to even have to share Jesus with other people. And then there was that wedding party. Remember that? When Mary asked Jesus to prevent a very embarrassing situation, because, of course, hospitality to this day in the Middle East is absolutely essential. And at a wedding, it was a sacred duty. So when the beverages had run out, that was a big problem. And Mary says to Jesus, uh, I need some help. And what does Jesus say? Woman, it's not my hour. It's not my time yet. And then, then what does she say? She doesn't take no for an answer. She says, do whatever he tells you to the servants. Do whatever he tells you. Apparently, Mary had some kind of influence on Jesus. He wasn't intending to do anything miraculous or public or profound at that moment, apparently. But Jesus seems to be swayed by his mother. And I love that because Jesus didn't, did end up helping. And we could argue, well, Mary got ahead of Jesus, and in a sense, she did. But Mary also had this boldness, this boldness to seek and knock and ask that Jesus talks about later, to know that God hears us, that this is a real relationship that we can have with God that we can have with the Lord, a real relationship. Not pretend, but actually real interaction. And I love that possibility. And to this day, millions of people go to Mary, the intercessor, and say, Mary, will you talk to your son? <laughs> will you talk to your son about this problem that I'm having right now? I love that. Now, it's not something I would do, as a Protestant, but I get it. I get it because of this passage. It's that great cloud of witnesses that we're told in the book of Hebrews. It surrounds us at all times. It's the city of God. It's the, it's the, it's the heavenly church among whom Mary stands. And people are talking to her. <laughs> and we're certainly talking with her to God. So what am I trying to say? Mary is a relatable saint. She had doubts. She had questions. She tried to lead instead of follow Jesus sometimes. She was bold, and we appreciate that. We appreciate 
how she didn't worry about protocol, how she went right to the Lord. We love her for that, and it empowers us in our prayers and in our life with God. But I, let's look a little bit further, because Mary also teaches us a prayer of kingdom conviction. A prayer of kingdom conviction. My soul magnifies the Lord, for he has brought down the powerful and lifted up the lowly, she prayed. We know Jesus preached the upside-down kingdom. Remember, I I did a whole series on that recently. Jesus preached the upside-down kingdom, where there is power and weakness, where the exalted are the humble, where death is swallowed up by life. But before Jesus preached the kingdom... In his earthly ministry, hey, Mary prayed for it. Mary prayed for it. And that's why in her magnificent prayer, she's praying a prayer of gratitude for answered answers from God. The message of the magnificent of Mary's prayer after she receives the news from the heavenly messenger, is that the kingdom of God has come near to her. The kingdom of God has come near to her. Listen to this. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. By the way, this this prayer is also very similar to the prayer that Hannah prays when she discovers that she's going to bear Samuel. And I love that too, because the scripture is a part of, of, of the whole of Mary's life. For he has looked with favor on the lowly estate of his servant. And surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. God has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. That's just a piece of that powerful prayer. Check it out in Luke chapter 1. Think about it. Mary is the young woman from a backwater town in Galilee. She represents not just those who are economically poor. She represents everyone who has needs. Everyone who has needs. And Mary says, I am, I am one of those. And God has chosen to do something really big through me. Why me? The prisoners, the blind, the outcasts, the hungry, the grieving, the hated, the persecuted, the rejected, the blind, the disabled, the unclean, even those who are dead, you might say. Mary is all of us in in the depths of our weakness, in the lowest place, where we feel like at times we question our value, we question our worth, we feel despised, we feel hurt, we feel rejected, we feel alone, And the living God comes through such a one as these. Blessed are the poor in spirit, Jesus says, for theirs is the kingdom of God. That's my mom, by the way, Jesus could have said. That's my mom. And I don't know about you, but I think that's good news. What do you think? I I like this thing about following Jesus. I like where he's going. I like how he treats people. I like how he values every single one of us in this room, no matter who we are, no matter what our background. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these, as you. And the social distinctions and the titles and the labels that we use in society are obliterated by Jesus because we all stand in need of the grace of God and the power of God and the love of God. And the hope of God, every single one of us. Muritus, who was a wandering scholar in the Middle Ages, who was also very poor, there's a story about him. He came, became very sick in this little Italian village, and he was taken to a hospital for the, the outcasts, basically the people that would not normally get much treatment at all. And the doctors are discussing his case in Latin, never dreaming that Muritus, who was a scholar, actually understood what they were saying. And when they 
started talking about doing medical experiments on him because he was just a worthless wanderer, he says suddenly, in Latin, to their shock, he says, call no man worthless for whom Christ died. Call no man, no one, no person, no human being worthless for whom Christ died. Do you believe that? This is the kingdom conviction that Mary had, that her son had, that God means for all of us to have. And so we pray with that kingdom conviction. Or we don't pray like Mary. And finally, we're called to pray a prayer. And I wrote in your outline, joyful surrender. Because there's, there are many points in Mary's life when she feels joyful, but you know what? I added a word, solemn. I, I was looking for the word. What's the word? Serious? Solemn? Sad? I, I decided to pick solemn because I, I believe this prayer is both joyful and solemn because she understands what it means. She really understands it. She gets it. She gets what this is all about, where Jesus is headed. Here I am, she says, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Let it, with, let it be with me according to your word. And then, after Mary says that, we're told the angel departed. The theme of Mary's life is a conscious, rational conscious and faith-filled surrender to the purposes of God. It was, a, it was a joyful surrender, but it was also a solemn surrender because it would lead her to the foot of the cross. It would lead her to the foot of the cross. She could have said, no, I really believe that. The angel didn't say, this is going to happen. He announces that this is the will of God for it to happen. Otherwise, he could have just announced it and left. Hey, you're going to have this baby. Goodbye. But the angel waits for something very important. He waits for the angel to say, what? Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word, and then the angel departs. Why? Because the angel is waiting for Mary's assent. Waiting for her permission. Waiting for her faith-filled, solemn yes. And so Mary is all about continuing to say yes. Right? She continues to say yes. Yeah. She continues to show up even when it's so hard. And she continues to say yes. She says yes to the baby that she birthed in a cave in Bethlehem where there's nothing there but the lowest and even the, the shepherds and the barnyard animals, right? Who, did they even care that she was there? And she says yes to Jesus' growing popularity despite her motherly concern and maybe even fears for him, and why this is all going, and her only partial understanding of what this could all mean. And she says yes, even to the cross. She says yes, even to the cross. We read in John's Gospel that when, let's read this whole passage, meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus, John wants us to know this, it's an historical point where his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene, we'll get to her, very important. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, Jesus said to his mother, remember Jesus is on the cross, woman, here is your son. And then he says to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. You know, what you say in a moment like that is very important. 
And it was Jesus' desire that Mary be enfolded. Enfolded from that point on into the company, the permanent company of his disciples as his first disciple. In case there was any doubt, you're not going to go living with my, my family, my brothers, my, extent, my cousins, my uncles. I want you to live with John. I want you to be with John. And I love this painting of, of Mary by Jen Norton as well, because it reminds us that Mary was right in the midst of the followers of Jesus from that point on. Here she is depicted in this moment on Pentecost after Jesus has risen from the dead and made his final commission, and they're waiting for the power of the Holy Spirit to come. And where is Mary? She's right there, right there in the middle, right there as the Spirit comes and fills them with power. And they receive the consolation, the, the healing, the gift, the, the hope, the power of the Spirit. I am with you always, Jesus said. I'm with you always, Mary. I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. And in the same way on this Passion Sunday, we may, we may not pray to Mary, but as the mother of our Lord, as our sister in Christ, hey, we do pray with her. We do pray with her. I imagine Mary actually with us right now. And she is with a great cloud of witnesses, right? That's what the book of Hebrews tells us. She is with us. And I imagine her standing right now. And she has her own prayers for the world, for this, oh my gosh. This world is so broken. You think about this last week, so much pain, so much hurt, so much this world that needs Jesus. You know, we really do need him still. And I see Mary standing here, and she's the first. She always was. She's the first to come and to lay down her prayers at the cross. And I want to say, united by the Holy Spirit, let's join her there. Let's join her there right now. And so I want you to take this moment, if you've got a bulletin, if you don't have a bulletin, you're going to need one. Is there anyone here who doesn't have a bulletin? You all need one because inside that bulletin there's a, an envelope. And I, want to, I want you to take this moment to write down your prayers on the card, and if you're online, hold on just a minute, I have some instructions for you. Service is not over for you. <laughs> I want you to take this moment to write down your prayers on that card that's inside that envelope. It might be a sin. It might be something that you need to confess before God in some way that you've hurt, hurt someone, uh, that you have, your relationship with God is broken. Confessing those things, writing down also whatever burdens you are carrying today? What are the fears? What are the diatrosos in your life? What is pushing you to the limit right now? What's pushing you to the limit? It's okay. Talk about it. Tell the Lord what it is. He knows. He already knows. But it's good for you to write it down. It's good for you to write it down. And if you're at home, I want you to find a piece of paper and I want you to write down those things too. Whatever sin that you're, you're carrying in your heart, whatever burden that has been weighing you down, I want you to write that down on that piece of paper. And then I want you, if you're online, I want you to take a big felt marker, a big pen, and I want you to draw a cross 
right down the middle of that piece of paper and a cross beam from right to left. Draw that cross. You can even put a circle in the middle just to remind you of the power of God that holds it all together, holds you together with his love, his forgiveness, his mercy. And if you're here in person today, I want to invite you when you're done, take your time. Julie's going to start playing actually right now as we're having this time of prayer. Uh, I want you to bring that prayer and lay it down at the foot of the cross. Today we're just going to we're just going to place them at the foot of the cross today. And know that the Lord hears it, hears the prayer, receives it. That God works all things together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And his mercy are from everlasting to everlasting. Let's write those prayers down. Let's write our hearts cry to God and lay them at the foot of the cross.
Dear friends, hear the good news of the gospel. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Therefore, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's stand right now as we sing our final hymn, our final song of worship today. Lift up your heads, ye mighty gates. It's a special Sunday for a lot of reasons. Immediately after the service today, uh, we are having a, a lunch and potluck lunch that a lot of folks have brought food. I hope you'll take time to stay, uh, stick around after the service and to enjoy that time of community together. And know that this is Holy Week, if you didn't happen to know that, and there are some special services this week on Monday Thursday, or Holy Thursday as we call it here on, at 7 p.m., we're going to be celebrating the Lord's Supper and Jesus' Last Supper with his disciples. On Good Friday, a special tenebrae service that our spirit singers are going to be leading right here in the sanctuary, very much live. And on Easter Sunday, a week from today at 1015, we'll be celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and the risen life in which we all also participate in through him. And there will be a Easter brunch after that, which you don't have to bring any food for. It's just going to show up, and you get to eat it. So it's going to be a beautiful week. I hope you'll participate in all of that. And remember, the silent retreat is still ahead. Please register for it with Rita Augustine outside. And thank you for all the ways that you participate in the life and the ministry of this church 
through your gifts, through your, uh, your resources, your love, your passion. God bless you as you give, even outside, if you want to give to, uh, through the ushers or even online as Lisa and, and I do. Let's continue to worship as the service concludes and serve our Lord together. Let's continue to enjoy the community of God's people. And thanks again to uh, Taylor and to Alexa 